Hello learners, I am Rohit from Talent Battle. In this video, we are going to work on previous year coding question for just pay. The difficulty level for this question is high. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe our channel and share with your friends so that everyone will be benefited. If you are looking for detailed preparation, we have a complete master class in which we will be covering aptitude, coding, data structures and algorithm, interview preparations, communication practice, company specific trainings, projects, latest technologies like full stack development, data science and many other things. For more details connect with us. Now let us start with the actual content of this video. Before starting with the actual question, I would like to give you some common instructions which are related to the just pay hiring process for the coding round. Majorly, if you analyze the previous year questions, you will get to know that most of the coding questions are based on trees and graphs, greedy algorithms and dynamic programming approach. Important thing is when you are appearing for this particular drive, you should be very clear with your fundamentals because the advanced data structure concepts are going to get asked. So if you are not clear with the fundamentals, make sure that you are working on them. Basic idea about all the linear and non-linear data structures as well as programming fundamentals is must. You have to solve three questions in 90 minutes and majorly they are based on the same problem statement. And Difficulty level will get increased question to question. First question will be on the same problem but basic level difficulty, then medium and then high. So to appear for this as well as to crack this, the time management is very much necessary. If you are working on the analysis of the problem statement very clearly and the logic building activity is fine, then easily you can write down the code for the provided problem statement. So make sure you practice the respective prerequisite things and then you can work on the coding part. So let us start with the question that we are going to discuss. The given problem statement is you have to analyze the problem statement very clearly understand each and everything what is mentioned over here and then develop the logical steps provided with the test cases you can cross check the answer. You are given a forest and it may contain a single tree or more than one tree with n nodes and each node is given an integer value from 0 to n minus 1. What is our task in this particular statement? You have to find the nearest common ancestor for two given nodes that is x1 and x2. An n value can be very large. You have to aim for an algorithm with a time complexity of order of n. Means again, whenever you will develop the logic, make sure that the entire complexity should be order of n only. If you are not getting this complexity, then again the test cases will not get satisfied. Those are our hidden test cases. Now when we talk about the provided problem statement, it is very clear that it is based on the tree data structure and how to deal with the finding of nearest common ancestor when two given nodes are there. So if you are clear with these steps, then easily you can proceed further. But don't worry, I will be giving you the flow step by step where we will apply the logic of finding the nearest common ancestor and then we'll work on the actual statement. The formats of input and output are very important. Whatever they have mentioned in the formats, you have to clearly apply the case. Anything extra apart from the provided format will not be acceptable. So input format says that first you have to accept an integer value t which denotes the number of test cases followed by three t lines where every test case will contain three lines. First line will have the test case, which is the value of n. Second line will have the test case where n values, where the number at index i is nothing but the parent of node i. This line is very important. And the parent of root is minus one. And the range of index is given that is zero to n minus one. Third line says that for every test case, you have to contain two integers within the range 0 to n minus 1 whose common ancestors we have to find. So when we say that the number at index i is the parent node of i, means the values that they will provide, according to this statement, we have to work with it. So when we will discuss the steps of finding the nearest common ancestor, this part will be clear. Then output format says that for every test case, you have to provide output a single line which consists the nearest common ancestor of the given nodes x1 and x2. 
if the common ancestor is not present according to the provided test case then your output should be minus 1 so the formation of tree then applying the input values that part you need to be very clear because that will not be in the scope of the respective discussion otherwise it will be very lengthy so to make it very easy what i am going to provide you i will provide you the steps that you can follow for finding the nearest common ancestor and then we will apply the logic in the coding part again i will be explaining the line by line code as well so let us first consider the test cases provided and according to that we will first follow the common ancestor process so this is the sample input provided for us first input line as mentioned number of test cases so two test cases are there this corresponds to number of test cases the first test case the value of n and these are the nodes provided range values then x1 and x2 is given 0 and 3 so these are the three inputs that we have to provide then second test case again in the same format 13 n value these are the nodes then x1 and x2 respectively 8 and 5 and for the first case your output should be 1 so that will be the common ancestor and minus 1 for the second case means there is no common ancestor for the second input case so we will try to develop the logic which will provide us this particular output so first start with the understanding how to find the nearest common ancestor if two given nodes are there in a tree so the first step should be you have to start at the root node of the tree so start from root node second step you have to check either of the given node is equal to the current node right so check for equality of the given node is equal with current node if the condition is true then you have to return the current node which is the common ancestor return current node and that will be our common ancestor so whenever you develop the logic make sure that you are doing it in a generalized way considering all possibilities if not then recursively you have to search recursively search now this will happen in two parts left subtree and then right subtree left subtree and right subtree so when we recursively search for the left subtree of the current node for the provided given node and then we will go for right subtree for the second given node now there are again possibilities if both the nodes are found in different subtrees if both nodes which are given that is x1 and x2 found in different subtrees this is also one of the possibility then what one in the left and other in the right so we have to return the current node as it is nothing but the nearest common ancestor so in this case you have to return the current node now second possibility is if both the nodes are in same subtree then what you have to repeat this recursive search till you reach to the new current node right so from here you will recursively go with this step repeat And the last case, if neither or node is found in the current subtree, you have to return the null value. But in our case, we have to return minus 1, which indicates that there is no common ancestor. So these are the steps only for working on the identification of common subtree. Got the point? So this is what the fundamental logic we are expecting that you should be very clear if you are aware about this process flow of finding the common ancestor then easily you can work on this particular problem statement. So try to apply this logic formation of the trees and all you have to do 
and then work on the logical part now let us discuss how exactly the code will work and what will be the process flow right so first we need to define the node class so i will write down the steps over here and then we will follow the same steps to write down the code as well so define a node class then what is the purpose of this node class i am purposefully indicating the step by step flow because this will help you to develop the logic part and if that is clear then easily you can write down the code once you define the node class which will represent our node in the forest this is the main purpose and every node will contain a value and that will be actual data and second will be reference to parent node after as per the given problem statement first we have to read the number of test cases and exactly we have to follow what is provided say that is t from input for every test case we have to read the number of nodes that is the value n and the parent values of each node from the input now to make it very easy we will create an array of nodes which will hold with the objects and then next step will be iterations so we will iterate over parent value because the same logic we have discussed in the common ancestor process once you iterate over the parent values and based on that we will create the corresponding tree node objects we will set the parent of each node based on the parent value and it is mentioned in the problem statement that if the parent value is minus 1 it means it is the root node we will set the parent to null so if minus 1 is there as a value then that leads to root node and then we will set parent to null for that particular case so this is how we have to analyze the problem statement so make sure you are assigning or you are allocating the 40% of time for analyzing the problem statement very clearly after that these steps should be very clear and then you will be able to apply it once your iteration is done then we will read x1 and x2 x1 and x2 input again from user as per the provided test cases for which we have to find the nearest common ancestor so develop a separate function function for nearest common ancestor where the logic of previous slide what we discuss will come under this particular method now in simple words what we are doing to what we are going to do here under the nearest common ancestor we will accept the two nodes as input that is x1 and x2 and we will return the nearest common ancestor how it will work it will use the set of stored ancestor for the first node because we have already traverse from the first node to the respective root and then we have to traverse up from the second node to the root because we have to check if any of its ancestors are present in the provided set then we have to return it and this will give me the common ancestor and then we have to print the results also so display result will be our another step each and every minute details we have to cover so displaying the result while displaying the result if we got a common ancestor we will print the value of that common ancestor otherwise if we are not getting it then we have to print minus 1 this is also mentioned in the problem statement and one more important thing while writing down the logic or code part that you have to focus on the required time complexity that needs to be order of n so the final case will lies here time complexity will be order of n where n is nothing but the number of nodes in your forest so if you perform a single pass through your nodes while building the tree and finding the nearest common ancestor then your complexity will be order of n if you are applying the logic because logical part can be different you can work with another logic also to reach with the same kind of solution but if you are doing multiple passes then the complexity will be higher which is not acceptable so make sure that you will be achieving linear time complexity right 
now this is what the code that we have to uh, this sorry this is what the logic that we have to follow to generate our code now let's move on to the ide part where we will be writing down the code following these steps so i hope the analysis and what will be the flow of execution is clear to everyone just make sure your fundamentals are very clear about tree data structure and common ancestor finding flow now move on to the process i will be using on line compiler here so first thing import the packages necessary packages so let's go with import java dot util dot stacks all then create class node as discussed it will consist of a value and we need a reference for the parent then initialize the things with the constructor part using the this reference initialize the value similarly the reference will be initially null this is the only purpose of our class node then our main class public class main under which our main method now input we have to accept so we'll go with the scanner class functionality now first step is we have to accept the number of test cases go flow by flow okay take one module at a time so that it will be easy for you to understand as well as apply it so let's take an integer variable which will give me number of test cases now multiple test cases input we have to accept so the logic says that we have to go with the for loop which will iterate over the number of test cases provided by the user and we will accept the node values in that loop starting from 0 so first we have to accept number of nodes so integer n now once the node are accepted whatever the dynamic allocation of the memory we have to do for maintaining an array of all the parent values so create that part based on the value n which is accepted in our earlier step then multiple cases are there so again one more for loop for iteration i0 for number of nodes so i less than n and i plus plus so again multiple inputs will come and that we have to store in our array so parent values which index points to i is equals to again all those are integers so next int so this for loop will give me the input once my input is ready prepare one for nodes similarly name of the class is node and i am using nodes variable again dynamic allocation for the size number of nodes 
and now we have to build the tree now this is important how you are going to build the tree so that's why your common ancestor logic will play the role here after building the tree assume that you are aware about this i will explain the flow of the building the tree part and then we'll move to the function which will work on the logic of our common ancestor finding so let's iterate for that again integer i is equals to 0 for number of nodes so i less than n i plus plus whatever we have the values that you have to assign to the nodes so nodes of i is equals to again a location is required based on i so range from i 0 to less than n now compare the things for the parent part if the value provided is minus 1 then we have to assign the node parent will be null so for every case you have to check it right so again i is equals to 0 i less than n and i plus plus if my parent values where my nodes are stored actually with respect to the index position i is equals to equals to minus 1 then what make sure that your nodes of i dot parent of that particular node will be null got it and suppose this condition is not there then else part where we will assign the parent values which is pointing to the index i to the node dot parent so that will become the parent so nodes of i dot parent is equals to nodes where my parent values of i is there this is expected so this will give me the tree formation this particular part of block of code will give me tree formation now as per our step after the formation of the tree we have to accept the input for x1 and x2 that is first node and second node so we are done with five steps iterated over the parent value we check for minus one case also and then we assign that particular node parent as null and now our task is to check for x1 and x2 input and then we will write down the function for common ancestor nearest common so again input acceptance integer x1 is equals to object with the next int similarly x2 is equals to next int so first node and second node is accepted now we have to work on the finding nearest common ancestor so node type again ancestor is equals to the function that we have to write so find nearest common ancestor in most of the cases they might give you a particular block of code also that you have to write down the code in this case but as we are discussing from scratch so i'm writing everything so our function name will be find nearest common ancestor which will accept the nodes so x1 we already have the data now from user and second will be x2 and this will return this function will return the common ancestor that we are going to store in ancestor part and then we have to check for two possibilities and that is the same what we are going to print as a result what is the possibility if the return ancestor by the function is equals to equals to null what it indicates it indicates that there is no common ancestor so in that case it is mentioned in the problem statement that you have to print minus one so minus one will be printed and second possibility is the node 
which is identified by our function that we have to print actual content so value system dot out dot print ln whatever will be in the ancestor dot value apart from this they are not expecting any extra thing in the output so don't give any message like this is the ancestor common ancestor no needed standard input and output we have to follow so here completes our part of functionality up to step 6 now we have to write down our method nearest common ancestor finding logic will come here so this is going to return a node type data and the name of the function will be find nearest common ancestor and x1 and x2 we are passing as a parameter so node will get to node 1 and second will be node 2 so x1 will be passed to node 1 and x2 will be passed to node 2 now here you can use the framework collection to make it easy so hash set is the best option that is suitable for this kind of problem statement so let's create that part set of node type dynamic allocation now we have to traverse from node 1 to the root and then all the ancestors we have to store right so from that node whatever we have up upward direction towards the root that is what the process is of common ancestor okay so how you will go with that develop a condition Till you reach to the null part now so while node 1 is not equals to null we will look for the ancestor so we'll add all the nodes one by one ancestors dot add the value node 1 and change the parent part so node 1 is equals to new node will become the node one dot parent right hand side to left hand side so we are traversing up from node one to the root and we are storing all the ancestors now same thing we have to do for second part also in the second case we will traverse up from node two towards root and we will find the first common ancestor so same logic again while node two is not equals to null and additional condition will come here because we have to find the common one now. so contains functionality we can use if whatever we have in ancestors if we check that is it containing the same value that is node 2 so we have to write ancestors dot contains functionality node 2 if this is also true then we can directly return the node 2 because that gives us the result but again possibility is there if it is not having because we have discussed the both options whether it will be in both uh, different subtrees or in common subtree also so in that case repeat the same process new node 2 will equals to node 2 dot parent outside if And the last option if both the cases are not working then we have to return null from here and already we have developed the logic that if we are getting null from this function means there is no common ancestor we will be printing minus one so return null cases for no common ancestor found then complete with the code see so hardly four or five lines of code if you are very clear with how to find the nearest common ancestor that's why i'm continuously working on the same part that if you are very clear with fundamentals it will be easy for you so now my code is ready considering all possibilities let us cross check it with the provided test cases first execute it yeah no errors so it is waiting for the input so extra messages no need to add directly you can give the input now what is the provided input to us 
yeah first is two test cases and n value is 6 so first input is two test cases second input is for first test case there are six nodes and what are the values 5 minus 1 1 1 5 2 5 minus 1 1 1 5 2 the array after that x1 and x2 value that is 0 and 3 so 0 space 3 now for this we are expecting the answer that is 1 that is again expected output because there is a common ancestor for this case now let's check the second test case 13 as a value of n and then the nodes so 13 input and 4 3 minus 1 minus 1 array values 4 3 minus 1 minus 1 then 1 2 7 3 1 4 2 7 3 1 4 and 2 1 2 1 2 then x1 and x2 in this case is 8 and 5 so 8 and 5 and minus 1 see both the cases are executing properly and the expected output is 1 and minus 1 for first test case it is 1 for second test case it is minus 1 so this is how you can deal with the respective case so I hope the part is clear each and every line I have explained at the time of writing also so flow is important this part five to six steps for understanding how to check with the common ancestor and this is for our executable code so that's it for the particular video I hope you like it share it with your friends thank you very much